Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar. I'm Lauren Maloyevich. I'm the Director of Marketing and Business Development at Simplify. Today, we're excited to have our Senior Solution Architect, Beth McBreen, discussing and demoing how um, Bill of Material Scenario Modeling within SAP Analytics Cloud. Um, as well as when the webinar concludes, there's gonna be a short survey that's gonna appear. And if you guys can please fill that out, we'd really appreciate it. It just helps give us feedback for the next webinar. Um, and also, as always, feel free to reach out to Beth or myself after the webinar ends with any questions. Um, and now I'll hand it over to Beth. Thanks. All right, thanks, Lauren. And thanks everyone for joining today's webinar. Um, we are talking about, you know, more of a, a specific topic, kind of the art of the possible in SAC, and that really is related to bill of materials, uh, looking at some of the scenario planning, right, running some uh, planning simulations and things that we can do um, within kind of that, that bomb setting. All right, so we're going to get started. Um, I have a couple slides up front that just kind of give an introduction um, and talk a little bit about SAC, and then I'll actually jump over to a live demonstration, kind of walk through that scenario modeling, and, and again, as I said, kind of that art of the possible, what SAC can offer in that, um, in that area. So before I start, I should probably introduce myself um, and the company that I work for. My name is Beth McBreen. Um, as Lauren mentioned, I'm a solutions director here. Uh, I've been working in the EPM space uh, and analytics space for the last 13, 14 years. Uh, before that, worked in corporate FP&A. And um, again, background is finance, and that really kind of holds true with the Simplify Solutions team as well. Um, as far as our company, obviously we're an SAP implementation partner. We focus on uh, EPM and analytics. Um, we do have technical folks, um, functional folks, but again, on our functional side, primarily our consultants are CPA, MBA, um, those that really understand the you know, financial, functional um, development and architecture as it relates to these planning um, and reporting models. So we're headquartered in Chicago, but we certainly do projects all over. Um, so uh, again, we have a, a solid group of, of folks that kind of focus, um, you know, again, in the last five to six years with a, a heavy concentration around the SAP Analytics Cloud space. All right, so if you're new to SAP Analytics Cloud, or what I will call SAC as the acronym going forward, um, you kind of the, the main highlights, right, is SAC is that solution that will provide your reporting, your analytics, your dashboard and visualizations, uh, and my favorite topic, which is planning. Um, and You'll hear this term where SAC kind of focuses on that collaborative enterprise planning, right? So not just from a you know core financial planning perspective anymore. Um, there's areas that from financial planning, we always looked at, well, that might be what we would call black box, right? We know that that functional area over there, they're doing their own planning and maybe doing some what ifs, maybe it's fairly manual. Um, but they're they're doing some planning over there, and then you know, okay, over in the marketing, maybe they're doing some planning over here, our ops side. And so what we're looking at is really SAC being able to take all of that collaboratively, put that together in one solution, so that everybody has um, accessibility to it, can um, again do easily versioning and and things of that nature. Um, and so again, we look at that as more of that collaborative feel. Um, for our planning across the enterprise. And so, you know, what does SAP Analytics Cloud do in terms of planning? And, you know, this is where, you know, I kind of go back to that art of the possible, right? So we have plan simple, um, you know, it's kind of like maybe not plan everything, but, you know, I get excited when I use SAC because there are so many different um, areas to explore where, just the basic foundation of SAC can help you, you know, just being able to run different scenarios, um, that alone in, in different, again, operations or different functional areas really can kind of help, especially now, you know, where we have kind of, you know, volatile, 
environments where we need to see like what happens with price increases or price fluctuations, um, things of that nature, being able to quickly go in and add in some assumptions and, and see the results and see how it um, impacts financially um, is, is very powerful for a tool to be able to do that. You know, so when we look at just kind of the core concepts of, of planning in analytics cloud, it is being able to have that top down, bottoms up, um, all of that what if um, and simulations around uh, different scenarios, um, having the drivers, right? Being able to take pricing as a driver, take volume and quantities as those drivers for you to have those levers in the, in the system, right? To be able to just kind of adjust those and let's see what that output is. Um, doing all of that and having all of that embedded those are all very typical, very common um, type practices that companies are using today with the planning um, functionality in SAC. So again, we're just like I said, we're taking a very specific example today, right? Looking at kind of peeling back the onion um, outside of our material, our material standards, and how could we, you know, forecast and kind of simulate what might be happening in future quarters. So we'll see that. Again, this slide kind of identifies the core concepts of planning. We're going to take a piece that's very specific and kind of show you how you can utilize SAC. Um, I do want to mention that, uh, Simplify, we do have prepackaged content. So what you see today um, in the demonstration, um, some of the, the stories, the templates, um, the data actions and rules behind where we're being able to, to do a lot of this automation. Um, this is all prepackaged content. We certainly help our customers get that, um, that jump, that, that leap into SAC. And sometimes it's by using this prepackaged content, it gives them um, you know, kind of a, a start in the right direction. They can expand from there, um, but it really helps them to kind of accelerate um, getting into SAC and being able to use it um, in a quick and efficient manner. So if you're interested in understanding any, any more within what kind of prepackaged content we offer, um, certainly that's on our website. I'd be happy to, um, I'd be happy to explain more to you if you want to reach out to me directly, um, or certainly you can explore our website and see what, what's there to offer. So um, before I, I turn over to the live demonstration and kind of talk a little bit more about conceptually what that what this means and, and how you can it can be leveraged in SAC. I do recognize that um, BOM or Bill of Material acronym can be used in different um, manners, different ways within um, solutions, ERPs, so on and so forth. And so uh, of course you could have a sales BOM, you could have a project-based BOM, um, things within plant maintenance. I did want to clarify that the example that you'll see today, this kind of the, the um, process that we'll walk through is really specific more to our production planning, right? So, um, you know, making changes in, in raw material consumption, making ch changes to price fluctuations. But, um, you know, if you're interested in other um, additional types of bonds as well, that's not to say that conceptually, if you look at the different components that were, um, utilizing how you could um you know you use that um in your type of bomb planning as well so i just wanted to make sure that as we go forward you understand which bomb focus it is because i have had questions um on exactly uh, what i mean as far as bill materials as it relates to as i mentioned this example relates to production planning okay all right so i'm going to just switch over here and go to my live SAC environment. And you'll notice here, I start off with the finance dashboard. I'm gonna go ahead and each one of these are you know, different areas where I can launch into. I'm just gonna launch into my sales and margin planning. And so within here, um, I have a dashboard. I also have steps uh, that would um, facilitate kind of my overall planning process as it relates to sales and margins. So I may have some target setting. Um, you know, I, I won't go into uh, the top down target setting, but just kind of at a high level, you know, certainly you can have many different what we call version management in SAC, 
right? So you can have multiple different versions. You can have target, you can have private versions that only you could see or you and whoever you want to share it with. Um, but that is kind of the baseline it is the version management um, functionality and SAC that allows us to you know, do these comparisons, do these quick private versions that, hey, what if I want to you know, fluctuate price or, um, or other a driver just in general one way, then I can decide whether, you know, that's throwaway or, yeah, you know what, we should publish this so that our leadership team can see that on their dashboard, um, see this version, best case, worst case type. So that's really, you know, what we do within target setting. I, of course, um, in, since today's example is all around kind of bill of materials, I'm not going to focus on that. Um, should you have questions, please let me know. Uh, but, you know, everything kind of starts, well, I want to take you through just more from like the standard costing to then, again, as I mentioned, sort of peeling back that onion, because obviously quantities and, and volumes play a part into, um, into our planning process. And so whether you're, you know, you may have, um, you may have SAC that you're using for your sales volume planning. You may be utilizing a different type of uh, demand planning uh, solution, maybe like an IBP, integrated planning, um, something like that that's feeding you volumes. Um, in, in either event, uh, many times when we're building this in SAC, we may want to review, make adjustments. Again, if we're doing versioning, just because what's coming through um, on one of those forecasts doesn't mean that we may have uh, different projections that we want to look at as well. So here's just kind of a simple template just to kind of take you through some of the, here I can see I'm actually looking at it by country, customer, and down to the material level, right? So I, I see my different volumes. Um, we have pre-built uh, formulas in here that will actually seed the volume. So if I were doing and planning volumes directly in SAC, I may want a starting point. I may want to take historical data, right? So I can use what I call uh, a data action, which is that play button right there. And I can say, you know what? I want to seed my volumes for my budget, I have a base period of 2019, and I want to go ahead and, and start with 2021. So when I run that, what I'm going to see is my actuals, my 537 here, it's just gonna refresh and it's gonna update. And I'm gonna see that copied over in 2020 and 2021, there we go. So all three columns are the same. So this may be actuals, um, it's just the example we're giving. I always say probably the more realistic approach is you would have a forecast, right? Because that's going to have maybe your nine months of actuals and three months of forecast included, um, in which you would then again seed for the start of your budget. So here again, um, as it plays into your um, bill of materials scenario plan, we, we want to make any adjustments or plan um, for our quantities and our volumes. Um, so with volume planning, I can, um, I guess maybe just in general with SAC, just so that you're aware, um, if you're new to SAC up at top, we have what we have a story filter. I have everything kind of set very generic right now. I was a particular, um, use, you know, had a, was responsible for a particular company code, maybe a particular profit center, um, sales org, things of that nature. You can go ahead and filter and limit. Right. If I want to come in and I only want to look at my wholesale customer group, I can do that. Only for maybe a particular country, I can do that. Um, I, these are what we call kind of our input controls. They're just filters to our template. You notice that whenever I make a change to the, the filter there, it'll go ahead and update. And then one a couple of the things that are, are nice um, from this view is obviously I have my totals on the top. Um, I can see by each customer and then I can see individually by um, at each material. But I have the ability to come in, I could say, you know, for this scenario, okay, we're going to get down into maybe some adjustments to price increases, but maybe to start off the scenario, I know that we're going to actually um, have a, a decrease of 10%. Right, so I, I can actually say just a negative 10%. I don't have to do that calculation anywhere else or know what the number is. I can just say, take this down 10%. 
and it automatically does that for me. And it automatically disaggregates all the way down, right? Down to my material level. I, lo I looked at total material, total customer within my wholesale group and all in total uh, country um, based on the history that I copied in. Okay, so that's kind of how that, that can work. Um, of course, I can come in and um, from kind of a bottoms up perspective, look at it by material, make specific adjustments by material. If I know, um, you know that I have a material, one material and I wanna do it by customer, you can easily um, have the flexibility to modify these templates so that you can see it in different views. But I just wanted to point out, you know, again, cause it kind of starts as far as with your, your quantities, that if you're planning that in SAC, you would have a typical um, uh, template that might look something like this. I'm also planning, you can see at the annual, of course, I've got these carrots here. I could expand into quarters. I could plan by months. So the um, you know, one of the real nice things with SAC is that ability to plan at whatever level you want. I'll disaggregate, which also lends to why it's important to you know, utilize the seeding functionality um, so that you have a basis, you have historical um, you know, seasonality and, and proportion to, uh, to each one of these materials. So, so I'll go back. So again, kind of step one, we've got our, our volumes. If I go back to my launch pad here, um, then I'm gonna open up our standard costs. Okay, so typically you may be, um, there's a couple different ways that, that we're looking at standard costs here. Um, I've seen where we are pulling directly right from an ERP. Right? So I'm gonna actually use my measure filter. And since we're talking about bill of materials, I'm gonna take a look at kind of our, um, our material standard. And our materials that what we're working with today in my example is more of, um, you know, personal care, lotions, shower gels, things, you know, all, all those type of um, products. And so basically what we're looking at here, these may be um, what we have kind of standard that we have within our environment that we have that we can calculate is I can calculate maybe like an actual average three months, right? Our, our prior three months, what, what the actual cost right, per unit might be or per quantity might be. And so the system, of course, can calculate. Uh, many times we're gonna pull those standards directly in from your ERP as well. Um, and you need to do either or, you can have the system calculate based on if you wanna just take uh, based off of actuals, if they're, the standards are already provided um, within uh, your ERP, we can pull those directly. And then it allows you to, again, um, you could, we can seed those over, um, you could make adjustments to them, just like we did the volume. So kind of the same process, you can do it at a high level. I think the, um, the difference here is that these are, and maybe just to call this out, is obviously these are costs, um, these are rates. And so if I look at, um, you know, specifically here, a total for Canada, for example, my total is $6.62. And that's because that's um, an average of all of my materials within that grouping, within Canada. So it's not, so now we have a different type of aggregation in SAC, right? It doesn't just, you know, with other solutions, it just sums it up. And then when you're dealing with rates, that doesn't make sense. It's hard to uh, analyze and look at. Um, so now, I can look at Canada and say, no, you know what? The average cost is actually going to be the standard. It would be, I'm gonna bring it down to five. So I do that at a total. Again, it adjusts all of my costs beneath here, okay? All right, so again, we're just looking at necessarily not bill of material yet down to that level. This is standards across where I can measure and you know, I can filter based on direct labor, overheads, um, inbound freight, things, things like that, right? Or I'm looking at all the standards that are, again, typically come in from the system or are, are calculated in SAC. Then from there, I move over to my next tab in my story here. This is where I can come in and I can calculate my cost of goods sold. 
So this is basically going to do that simple math that is taking the, the costs and based on our planned units, our planned quantities, and it's going to go ahead and calculate that and, and calculate the standards, right? And now we're looking at it from more of a count perspective into a financial PL. So in addition to that, let me just kind of collapse this. So now I'm able to actually see, you know, I have, here's my raw materials, labor, like I said, all, all my different standards here. I can actually open this up and now I can start to look at it by, um, by my different material, my different product groupings as well, right? So I can open up here I, now down to personal care. So again, allows me to, see that detail even from a financial now now looking at it from a financial dollar perspective um, i can see all of my costs that are aligned with my different um, product groupings right product families so i'm going to go ahead and just collapse that up what this also is illustrating um, i is the ability now to where it's ca automatically calculated standards obviously sac will also give the ability to input um variances to input all of your other cost of goods sold expense accounts um, you can do that through templates that's what we're just kind of again kind of illustrating here we obviously i know you would have more than two accounts here um, many times that you may be basing this off a percentage of your your um, standard costs you now so sometimes we will build in um, calculations to do that but just to, again, kind of uh, align that. So now kind of, again, peeling back that, that onion. So we've got our standards, we've got our quantities, and now focusing just on our raw materials, right? So we may, let's say, either we're using history to come up with those standards or we're receiving them from the ERP. And how often, maybe you have a company that rolls their standards uh every six months maybe every year maybe maybe it's more frequent maybe it's every quarter even then when they're rolling standards every quarter and you're trying to forecast out five quarters there's going to be price fluctuations there's going to be things that are happening that you want to take advantage of and, and kind of see how that may impact so that's where we started again kind of looking a little bit deeper into okay let's focus on um, our bill of material so i'm going to come back over back to my launch pad and here's where now we can do some additional detailed scenario modeling right where we can actually uh, i'm going to click on my bill of material scenario modeling link and it opens up a new story and this is now again going along with our same product group right our products are that personal care item so first we are looking at things like our consumption you know as far as uh, so i could come in here and i can do this again we talk about versioning right so i can have and create multiple different versions where i can copy this over and say okay well maybe from a consumption perspective um you, know, you can see here uh, that I have different products, and then I have you know, basically my ingredients as we work with um, lotions and <laughs> things of that nature, where we're applying what percentage of each ingredient um, really makes up and consumes my my product. So you know whether this is ingredients, whether this is parts to um, build a chair, you know anything along those lines. Um, these are really your raw materials and then what the consumption rate is for or consumption percentage, I should say, is for each one of your products. So this, of course, is a summarized view. Um, we may have this flipped where your groups may be along the top. Materials are going to be um, listed out. You ha can have different slicers or filters to kind of um, narrow that down. But again, trying to keep a, an example that's nice and um, clean for you to see how this kind of works in SAC. So you have, again, um, changes that we can make to our consumption. I think probably, um, especially now, when we look at our bill of materials is, is talking about like what standards are versus how we can incorporate price fluctuations. So knowing that 
it's not just one point in time, knowing that if we're planning out, as I mentioned, you know, several quarters out, um, if you're doing, you know, rolling 18 month forecasts, things along those lines, um, it's not always going to be, the standards aren't always going to be applicable. There, there definitely is things like your uh, price fluctuations happening. So this gives you the ability to be flexible based on when you want to see those price um, fluctuations take place. You know, I could come in and I could say that I think there's going to be um, a 50% increase in, in coconut oil, right? And so I can come in, I can enter that, that change in just to see, again, I could create my own scenario and say, well, what happens if I change my, um, my pricing? So we're gonna increase it by 50%. I can go back, I can see coconut oil um, is part of my hand cream, shower gel, shampoo, conditioner. Okay, so those are, those are my products. I've increased my price. And ultimately, we get to my view here. Now, my report view is basically I've got my raw materials. This came from my standards, right? So this came from where we were just looking at, where I was calculating my units times my standard cost to get to, um, you know, my, my financial dollars. And then I have my raw material scenario view here where when I make changes, now I can compare the two, right? I can run my updated bomb results and I can do it, I was doing it against the annual budget. And essentially it just runs through the calculations, applies those new percentages and makes my updates to my raw material scenario here. And um, specifically was here um, within January is when I made the price increase, right? So now I can do more. I can actually um, go in and, and make some adjustment. I could make some variances and comparisons, but ideally you know, we're able to kind of pull these, these two different lever levers to see ultimately see how that impacts um, and compare that against what we're looking at from a overall just standard costing. So in a different view, we could also take, I have more of a dashboard view. So that that example there kind of just lays it out more in a template form, right? I'm gonna make some changes within my grids and I'm gonna see what the impact is. Um, just to give you another type of view, different approach perhaps, um, is the ability to come in and look at it look at it from more of a dashboard view and how you can, again, having drivers and having them all connected, you could have something that is similar um, as this where I could come in and say, okay, I wanna increase. And again, we could identify specific time periods or other, but I could come in and say, I wanna increase my soybean oil by 10%. You know, So that will go ahead. This gives you kind of a, a dashboard feel where I can go in, I can make changes. And then, um, and then as you do that, my numbers will go ahead and you can see they're refreshing in my report and my graph and, and all of that. So when I do that and I update my, say, okay, oil is increasing 10%, it immediately shows me my new cost of goods sold number as far as well as gross profit. Now, of course, yeah, I could have gross margin percents and everything else on here as well. This is just kind of an example where I've got different um, a different graphical representation that updates. And this is all just based off of what I'm um, updating here. So if price is, again, if price is um, the biggest factor here, I can come in and I can make these changes and immediately see just on one dashboard, right? So this is kind of more of the impact of the scenario analysis, right? So rather than taking the pieces that I showed you before and calculating the results, this is all happening real time. So you can come in and be like, okay, well, you know, I, I foresee that we're going to um, have this price fluctuation. How is that impacting my, um, my financials? Same thing here, um, other input scenario drivers, you know, purchase uh, with the purchase price variances, manufacturing variances, you have the ability to make changes directly down here that will impact all of your, your graphs and tables. 
Um, so again, just kind of an interesting second view um, to be able to apply whether you want to see it more um, visually and kind of a summarized view, whether you want the ability and the flexibility to kind of see all those um, uh, a table as we, we showed here with more of the price increases that give you the flexibility to determine what months that could be not just what months but what quarters if you plan by quarter so again just kind of giving different views um, to you know show you how ultimately this gives you you know it, it doesn't necessarily replace um, it, you know kind of replace your your bomb buildup um, what I think this does well is gives you that scenario analysis that what if for those kind of planning simulations uh, where you know that you know something like that may happen or maybe you don't know but you want to try and take a look you know from a projection standpoint and say what if this happens how is that going to overall impact and then how do you know what type of business changes are we going to make um so that's kind of what the power behind sac is um as it relates to um kind of the bill material scenario planning Okay, so that's all I had for you today was just to kind of walk through that simple example. Um, as I mentioned, um, I'm happy, you know, to um, help understand further if I can, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. I think I have my last slide up here with my, my name and my email. Um, certainly you can reach out to Lauren as well, um, but um, that really concludes our presentation today and I thank you so much for joining. Have a nice day.